This is code.org. Okay, so I've already changed up my data set. Obviously, I have Paw Town now. I am headed over to, well, headed into user experience. Right now, the user scrolls to the end of the list and nothing happens. Oh, yes. So that's when I hit run. Remember, if I go back here, it doesn't move because I'm at index zero. Or if I go to the very end of my list, um, I'm just going to use names dot length minus one because I know that's the very end of the names. And so that's a Yorkshire Terrier, which makes sense right before Z. Nothing happens. We block them from moving because we know they're at the end of the list. So what's a better way, I'm going to move that back to zero, or a better experience for the user? I think it'd be really nice if we just looped it around. And I just made this huge looping note motion in the air for no reason because you can't see me. But anyways, I did. So how could we loop around here? Notice down here on the event that I click the right button. If I hover over these guys, you can see the idea of this button is the right button. So when I click it, kapow, this method executes. If index is less than names.length minus one. Well, remember what names is. Names is all of the names in the dog table, the name column. So if the index is less than the length of that list, then, right, so if this is true, if the index is less than this, what happens? I let the index get a new value. What's the new value of the index? It's the previous value plus one. That's a fancy way of saying, if you're not at the end of the list, add one to the index, which is why this functionality works, okay? Now, the minus one's important, though, because keep in mind, length of a list uh, is just how many items whereas indexes start at zero. So the final index might be 97, even though there are 98 items in the list. Okay, so that's what's preventing us at the end. Let's work on this one first. So rather than doing just this, I'm gonna add an else, bloop, by hitting that little plusy thing, it's magic. And what I'm gonna do is, let's say that we, uh, that the index is not less than names.length minus one. What does that mean? It means we're at the end of our list. And in that case, I'm just going to default and set the index to zero. So now if I test it, boom, I'm on my last item. Let's see if it loops around. Ta-da! Hello! It does. All right. Now the other part we need to do is the opposite. Let me hit run here. And now I'm at the first dog in my list. But if I hit back, nothing happens. So how can we solve that? Let's find the condition. And it's here. If index is greater than zero, let index have a new value. Its new value is the old value of index plus minus one. And again, keep in mind, the only time this code executes ever, ever, ever is only if this is true. If this is true, then it says, cool, let's go in here. Otherwise, it says, oh, let's say index was zero. Well, index was zero means this is false. It never runs the code in the mouth type thing. And it just goes to update the home screen. And then the index would remain zero. So let's add an else, right? So if the index is zero uh, or somehow less than zero, we're going to set it to a new value. In that event, we're going to do index is equal to, and we want it to go to the end of the list. Well, again, how do we know we're at the end of the list? It's this same thing here. We're going to do names dot length minus one since we since indexes start at zero. So this should put us back to the end of the list. And how do ifs else statements work? Now, if this is false, it does still skip, wow, well, my drawing's terrible, this, but it executes the else, same up here. If this is false, it skips this still, which is exactly what we want, and executes the else. Let's give it a shot. Boop, boop, awesome. Looking good. All right, up next is, I think, the challenge or new features. Onward.